outside here from a vacation. And the, the nature photography is something that has given me some of those things, a reshaping of perspective, a sense of the vastness of God's creation, giving me that perspective on my place in the world, albeit as a beloved child of God, but still I'm not the center of everything because this creation of God's is so tremendous. Look at that teeny tiny person inside that rock. This was on a trip that I was taking in, um, I believe that was in Arches um, National Park in Utah. Um, so this sense of scope and the grandness of God's creation and my little role in it. A picture like this helps me breathe. If I take the time to just look at this picture, meditate on it, imagine myself in that space, <sighs> brings me to a different place. And it reminds me about God's capacity as creator and as sustainer. And even as redeemer, as I begin to think about the cycles of life and creation and nature, thinking about new beginnings and endings, the, the dawn and the dusk, the transition from waking into sleeping and dreaming, imagining. The photography helps me see things in a new way. These are lettuce leaves. But this close-up made me think of Hildegard of Bingen, who described God as the life of life, um, that, that God's isness is my isness is a way that Meister Eckhart described a similar concept. He was a mystic, an early Christian mystic. I have sometimes taken my photographs and put words on them, usually um, through these practices where people will have a, a number of days, the 40 days of Lent or all the days of Advent, and each day will have a different theme. And so I'll take a photograph and put a word on it. I've printed these out on little cards at times and use them as a way to meditate, to focus on different qualities. Once for a retreat, I had a bunch of these cards laid out and invited everyone to choose one that spoke to them and then show that card to the group as a way to tell a story about their own life and what they're feeling right at this moment. So those are some of the ways that photography has helped me have that sense of beauty, scope, perspective, meditation, breathing. Another thing that I really enjoy a lot is painting very large size banners. So these are uh, a series, this is a series that we call the Multicultural Angels. And um, these were painted for Advent and they are oil paints on paper and they're oil paints that come like fat crayons. They're um, oil paint sticks. And so you color on this thick paper and that's what they're made of. They were inspired by this conglomeration of images to get inspiration. I will look, I will Google and search for different things and put different words in and I'll come up with pages and pages of images until I find the ones that just somehow speak to me or that I find interesting or that draw me in, that engage me. So this one on the left was actually painted by an artist in Beth's church. And so here you can see on the far right is the version of it that we painted in our church using that model from Beth's church. This scene in the middle is an Ethiopian or Coptic icon of the Annunciation. And so it shows the angel Gabriel there holding a white flower, offering it to Mary, and the dove of the Holy Spirit is coming down toward Mary. But if you look at that angel Gabriel, you see how that was a model for um, the angel in the green dress there. Um, this angel on the top right is an angel, a herald angel, um, pointing down, you can't see it in this picture, but pointing down to Mary and the infant Jesus. So this tapestry became the inspiration for the herald angel that you see there. And then finally, this, whoops, this stained glass window is actually at Taizé in France. And um, 
I did not know that when I found this image online, I didn't know I was copying a stained glass window in France, but it looks very French here. You can see we took the angel portion of it and made it a bit more African. We're really trying to imagine all of God's creation being reflected in the very angels. So those, that's the inspiration for the multicultural angels. And this is the way we make them. <laughs> So we hang these big pieces of paper in uh, one of the rooms at our church, and I get people to help me. We project images, and I'll show you that in a later slide, but we pre project the images and then trace them on this big paper, and then we begin to paint them and color them in. So this is another piece of the art when we do art corporately and communally we have wonderful conversations while we're doing that one of the young adults that you'll see in a later picture doing this with me talked to me about how this was the church for him and he was able to um, share things with me and be in conversation and reflection about who is god um, in his life and um, some of the struggles that he was facing. So this is the church doing art together. Here are more pictures of some of the helpers and a little bit further along in the process. Here is another example of when we painted aspen trees. Mm -hmm. And here they are in the, the corner of our chapel. This is our modern chapel, Buchanan Chapel very um, kind of spare and clean. Um, but we chose aspen trees because of their symbolism. Every tree in a grove of aspens is one tree interconnected by their massive root system underground, literally the same DNA in every tree because they're all connected. And we thought this was just a beautiful metaphor for how we seem to be solitary, but we're all connected underground by God's love, God's grace, God's creative power, God's life force. So um, this is a picture of at the very beginning, hanging a piece of paper and projecting the image so we can trace the basic outlines. And then there are the four images um, a lot more complete. These are actually painted with acrylic paints on a different kind of paper called Tyvek, which is a shiny paper that um, actually you wrap houses in it for insulation. It's not permeable, so it's much more durable than the paper we were using before. And this black paper is um, a, this is the paper that you stand in front of if you get your photograph taken in a studio. It's photographic backdrop paper. It's very thick, very durable, uh, not as durable as the white Tyvek that you see in the middle one there. You really cannot even rip that Tyvek. Um, the black paper ones, you have to realize it's folk art in a way, and it's going to um, tear after a while. But here are those lily banners in our main sanctuary. And we used these at our four o'clock jazz service before the pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, and when we were having jazz in the main sanctuary, it wasn't a full sanctuary. So we put these images sort of halfway down the sanctuary. So when you walk in, you're, you're walking into this beautiful lily garden. And as you walk past them, then the service happens up in front of them. So it was a way to make the uh, sanctuary a little more intimate. And here's just a picture of them more up close. So the lilies. And in this case, we were able to have the children help us paint the grass. It of the images. Some of it was very super fun and another experience of doing art in community. So um, these are ordinary time banners that we made with acrylic paint and just putting splotches of color and using a rubber roller to roll the paint around. To give you an example of my inspiration, this is a photograph that a friend posted on Instagram and I saw it and I just loved it so much. Again, the color, the texture, um, the sense of abundance there, the sense of life. And so I took this image as an inspiration for another set of Easter banners that we call the Easter garden banners. 
And at the bottom of these, you can see the little round red flowers that are featured at the top of the example photo. But that um, just was such an explosion of color. So I'm going to shift and talk about another big part of art for me, and that is I have gotten into icons and I am still learning about icons. There's a lot I don't know, but this is one of the first ones that I painted. And I want to tell you a little bit about icons. Um, you're probably not familiar with them. They're very big in the Orthodox Christian Church. Um, and some Catholics use them. It's unusual for Presbyterians because of our history, we have resisted them in the past. But for me, they really are a place of beauty and meditation. So the images are stylized. They're not meant to be real. And so you can see that the little infant's hand around touching his mother's face, Jesus and Mary, um, no, no baby could make their hand do that. But it's, it's meant to convey this intimate touch. Um, and in that sense, it's meant to really show not human people, but the spirit of these holy persons and the spirit of their relationship. So um, it evokes emotion and it's meant to draw us into that relationship with the holy figures that are being painted. So if I look at this and just meditate on this image and think about the intimacy between Mary and Jesus and think about how I am invited into that love, um, that love of parent to child and think about how God, God the creator has churchy than some of the other art that I was showing, but it has been very life-giving for me. Um, this is an icon that I painted of Joseph holding the infant Jesus. And there's a lot of Mary in the infant Jesus. There are fewer of Joseph holding Jesus, but um, I just love this image. This was the model in orthodoxy, in, in iconography, it's tradition to copy a strong model. So there are particular forms, particular images that have classic names. And this was my copy of that form, but I was exploring with different kinds of color and looking for vibrancy and color and texture. But in iconography, it's important to look for balance in the color too, so the colors aren't too jarring. Um, this is me at my desk. Uh, I'm going to show a little bit of this. This is a 30 second high speed video. So it's not very relaxing to watch it, <laughs> but the actual painting is a bit more relaxing than this. Um, so I'm working in acrylic paints here on wooden boards. In traditional iconography, they actually use um, not acrylics, which are made out of plastic, but things of the earth. So they'll get powdered um, colors of dirt or different items and mix it with egg yolks and vodka and water. And it's called egg tempera paint. And I will be learning how to do this. So there's a whole theology of how we take items of nature and create a holy image. And that is this relationship between um, nature, creation, and these holy images. So after I did those, I took a class because I was just reading and making things up and trying it. So I took a class at the Siena Retreat Center. We had a, an iconographer, um, Drajan Dupour, who took us through the process and took us on a little field trip to an Orthodox church. I had never been in one, but look at the walls. Every inch of the walls is covered with icons. Here's another one. I love these big images of Mar Mary and Jesus. I didn't get a picture, but usually in the middle, if you look straight up at the ceiling, there's a big round opening with Jesus Christ, ruler of all, um, really huge like this. 
So um, I'll stop talking about the church, but um, these folks at the Orthodox Christian Fellowship talk about how icons teach us our history by telling the stories of the faith. They teach us our theology by the symbolism that's embedded in them. They draw us near to the saints. Um, they call us to be still and worship, and they call us into a heavenly realm. So sometimes they're called windows to heaven um, or a doorway between the worlds. Uh, this is the one I painted in the class. That's the, the one we were copying. So this is the model, the original. And then this was my copy, which he talked us through bit by bit. And um, I'll say that another aspect of acceptance, I mentioned that is one of the things that I get out of this work. And part of it is accepting my skill level and my lack of skill level. And I know this is very beautiful. This is like one of the most beautiful things I've ever made, but to get there is really hard. And a lot of issues come up for me of self-judgment and self-doubt. So working through that while painting this and remembering that the goal is prayer and connection to God, that helps me accept. So here's a very old image of Sophia, the wisdom of God. And Sophia, you know, we read about her in Proverbs uh, as a woman personified um, wisdom because the, the Greek word Sophia is a female word, feminine. We don't have gender with our words in English, but in Greek there is and in Hebrew as well. And she is considered the energy, the very energy of God. And that's why she's presented in this way, like she's vibrating red color. Um, so I wanted to make an icon for a friend who requested I make one of Sophia, but I needed to bring these human qualities in here. And there are other similar pictures of Jesus Christ. So often the images of Sophia have the initials of Jesus Christ. And they do on this second one that I put up here. And this is the one that I made. So in orthodoxy, like the theology that, that this, these images teach are that Sophia is Jesus Christ. The wisdom of God was there at the beginning, the logos uh, at, with God at creation. And that's why I put that quote there. I was there when God created. Um, so to meditate on this and to think about God, the creator and Jesus, the Christ and Sophia, the wisdom of God being the same thing, it becomes like a prayer and a meditation. Um, I have just a couple more slides I'm wrapping up here. Um, so the, her face looks a little dusty. Instead of making her red and vibrating, I put a layer of gold dust over her face as another way to try to convey the energy of God. Um, here's a model of St. Stephen, the first martyr and um, archdeacon. Um, I made this copy. And again, I'm exploring into representing um, different racialized looks and identities for some of these figures who were Middle Eastern. And then most recently, I put myself out there and painted live during a worship service on Ash Wednesday. And so in one hour, I painted this picture, but I have to tell you, I spent so many hours preparing, designing it, practicing drawing that hand, painting a sample of the hand. So when we started worship, it looked like a blank white canvas, but there was a light pencil outline and I had practiced so much. So in one hour, I painted this. It did get me back in touch with my creativity and getting over that hump of fear helped me to re-engage with my art and connect with all of these beauty, color, meditation, breathing, focus, perspective, acceptance. So um, that's what I got to share with you today. It's wonderful. <laughs> Nanette, do you wanna take questions or do you want to have me go and then questions for both of us? What's your preference? Huh. Uh, um, I, I want to make sure Beth, you get your full time. Okay. Yeah. I want let's, let's hear Beth and then we'll open okay. it up. For, yeah. Okay. 
Good. Uh, thank, thank you, Nanette. Nanette. I love mm -hmm. your art. Thank you. Beth. My art is your... a little smaller. I work on a much smaller scale than Nanette. Um, just a little bit of a background. I majored in art history in college. Um, I am not a trained artist. I'm, I'm somebody who just tries things and um, maybe someday I'll take a class and figure out how I'm supposed to be doing all of this. Um, I am always doodling um, during a meeting. You can see I have, a, I have colors and doodles because Presbyterians love meetings and that's what gets me through it. Um, I, the church I serve has a really big, wonderful arts ministry. Um, I don't know if you all know Sarah Graham. Mindy, do they know Sarah? No. Well, Sarah uh, Graham. If they've been at First Press for a long time, they might remember that she sang in the choir about a dozen okay. years ago. Well, Sarah Graham is someone who was a member of our congregation who then moved to North Carolina. And she did this painting behind me. And um, the congregation has a big arts ministry and there were people in the congregation that encouraged me in my own artistic endeavors. My daughter is also now 15 and takes less of my time. So my art, or at least this most recent iteration is a more recent thing. Um, my medium is paper collage and mosaic. And um, for me, it's very meditative. I have a 10 second, let me, hang on, let me share my screen here. Uh, I have a 10 second thing of me, let's see. Doing this, okay, there we go. Oh, come on. So there I am pasting, oh, that's the piece you have, Nanette. That's Lydia. Um, making my mosaic. Beth, I like, don't, Beth, I not I don't, sharing. It's not I sharing. See, mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Well, hang on. Let me stop sharing. I think the other ones will share. Um, Beth, where to start? Beth, with? I, I did pull out Lydia today. Oh, yes. My office. And she's oh, thank here. you. Yes. So you can see Lydia is made out of little quarter inch squares of paper. Oh. Um, and the pieces of paper, except for the images, all come from old Sunday school lithographs. We were getting rid of our old Sunday school lithographs, which were beautiful pieces of art, but culturally not very appropriate. And so I um, started by making a series of 12 um, matron saints and actually used the form of icon um, as what I would do. Part of that, so I would describe my art as exegetical in a lot of ways, that I am engaging with the stories in the Bible um, and maybe reinterpreting them or taking the modern experience and putting it into them. Um, and so I was, as a Christian woman, I'm really aware of how our stories have excluded women or kept women in a second, second place. Um, and I wanted to lift up the women. So let's see if the screen share works now. Hang on. <clears throat> mm, I need to move that. All right. Can you see that? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. So this, um, can you guess who this is? Who do you think this is? Mm -hmm. Nanette and Mindy, you can't guess. Any guesses of women in the Bible this might be? holding a piece of fruit, wearing a dress of leaves. This is Eve. So you can see that I took some of the basic um, qualities of an icon, that it's sort of chest up. There's a halo. It's very, um, uh, it's not representational. It, it's more symbolic. Um, and I think Eve has been given short shrift over the years. Um, I think she was actually a pretty extraordinary person. So when I create, I, I made a photography book, you know, I went to Shutterfly and made a book of my matron saints and each had a, a short meditation with her. And I think of Eve as being the first mother and all the things she had to do by herself without another woman in sight. And I wanted to honor her because I think that the role that she has played is not one of the woman who caused all the sin in the world, but 
the first mother who endured. So I also renamed them. So Eve is the matron saint of those who persisted. I might have also been making her after um, Senator Warren and Mitch McConnell had their little interchange. <laughs> so with Eve, um, I made her uh, African because they say the first human beings uh, started in Sub-Saharan Africa. And I would have made her hair bigger, but my punch, my paper punch broke. So um, I really wanted her to have really big hair, but I couldn't do that. Um, she is wearing a dress made of leaves because if you remember after they ate the fruit, um, they realized they were naked and they hid themselves and then God made them um, clothes out of fig leaves. She is holding a piece of fruit. Um, and in all the matron saints, so um, when I studied icons and medieval art and pre-medieval art, I learned that a lot of the iconographers, um, you could tell who did what because in the gold leaf of their halos, this is gold paint and not gold leaf, they had a punch that would make a design and you could tell if the same artist did the same design because the punch was the same in embossing the gold leaf. My punch is this circle of uh, beads. The swirls behind her uh, are indicative of the swirls of her life. So this is really my attempt to um, retell the story of Eve by using lithographs that told one story, cutting them up, um, and then saying, Eve is a woman that I honor. And I want to lift her up and say that for me, she is a mother and a saint. Um, part of this comes, as Nanette said, I, my primary image of God is as artist. I look at the creation and I see the creation as the work of a master artist. And um, that's really how I connect with God. Now that could be because I'm a visual person and I see things and I notice things, but that's really how I connect with God and through color. I am a color person. I mean, you can see in this painting behind me, it is full of color. And normally it hangs along um, a hallway that's painted orange and it looks great. I'm wearing a bright yellow shirt. Um, it is very satisfying to me to go through paper or to go through magazines and get the colors that I need out. Color is soothing for my soul. And the process of cutting up these little tiny pieces of paper or punching them, I do use crack punches, and gluing them down. I mean, it really gets me out of my head and into a space where I can be more welcoming to the spirit's presence. Um, so another one I did, all right, let's see if I can screen share again. So um, this, ah, she went away. There she is. This is um, Jael or Yael. If you know the story in the book of Judges. Um, <laughs> so um, Jael basically crawled into the tent of the enemy commander in, while he was sleeping and stuck a spike through his head. Um, <laughs> one of the more violent women in the Hebrew scriptures. And I made her jail the matron saint of the mansplained. Um, if you don't want, know what mansplaining is, there's a tendency, I'm sure this never happens at your wonderful congregation, of men interrupting women and explaining or re-explaining what the woman just explained, and that's called mansplaining. Um, and sometimes when that happens to you a lot, you do have an urge to quiet that person down. <laughs> and so maybe not to put a tent spike through his head, but the edges are all cut out <clears throat> from the lithographs. And those are all the men who are not supporting her. Uh, that is the tent spike that she's going to use. You see her halo and my little um, symbol of the necklaces. And I put her, the colors don't show up great here. She is in purple and gold because I just thought I want to make her powerful and regal. Um, and uh, she has a pretty determined look on her face. Gosh, I made these four or five years ago. I like to think that I've gotten better at the mosaics. Um, well, maybe. Um, 
part of it too, the exegetical work is how is God speaking to me through the stories I read of these women um, who were not given first class status in their culture and their time? And what can I learn about the gifts that they had, the fact that they even made it into the canon, and how can I highlight their stories and their gifts to, um, to the tradition? And again, you see that it's sort of this, I, I went with the basic of the icon form, um, not full body, facing forward, halo, and then added my own twist. Um, let's see. Then, so I did the 12 matron saints um, and I thought 12 was a good number and I didn't go back to them. But then I started doing other women of the Bible who were either not named or not known. And I did, okay, now who do you think this is? Who do you think this is? Any guesses? Okay, this is Noah's wife. <laughs> so, I, uh, so the title of this is um, The Woman Who Remembered All the Things to Bring Before Getting on a Boat for 40 Days in the Rain with a Bunch of Animals. <laughs> um, because I don't know how it might work in your household, but in my household, I'm the person who remembers the things and also knows where the things are. So um, I gave her, so it's raining, right? It's raining and the umbrella represents the rainbow that's going to come. I gave her a Rosie the Riveter um, hair scarf. And let's see, how do I make this bigger? I don't know how to make it bigger. And then let's see, I cut out from the circulars in the newspaper, all these items. So she, re she remembered to bring, remember she's getting on a boat for 40 days in the rain with a bunch of animals wine and beer, a paper towel and toilet paper. There's a lot of chocolate in there. There's air freshener, there's Benadryl, <laughs> Band-Aids. Um, so I just thought, you know, she doesn't even get a name, Noah's wife. I mean, not much would have happened without her. There's a wonderful children's book called uh, Mala's Garden. Mindy or Nanette, do you know that book? And in it, um, Noah's wife is given this name Mala and she remembers to bring the seeds to plant. So when the earth is dry again, they will have uh, things to eat and flowers to enjoy. But I wanted to honor the often unsung role of women and women in the church who do so much behind the scenes and don't even get a mention or a nod. With this, I left um, using, I, I stopped using the um, lithographs, the old Sunday school lithographs um, because sort of the downside of this for my spirituality is, is I kind of, I'm kind of addicted to beautiful paper. So this is an excuse for me to go to the art store and buy beautiful paper. I just went yesterday and there were some papers that were discontinued. So I had to buy them. Um, so a lot of my work is sort of exploring my own role as a woman in the Christian tradition, going back to my ancestors in these stories and seeing how I might lift up aspects of their life, whether it's culturally appropriate or not. Um, but just to say, I wanna honor these women and the stories that they told and the role that they played in the continuing story of um, God and people. Now, unlike Nanette, I did not, I just did three images. Um, how are we doing on time? Okay, we're good on time. Um, the other thing I want to say is when John introduced this, he asked of, you know, if there's any practices that we could share with you all. So um, I have no idea if you're here because you're artists or you're just diehard, you know, adult ed folks. But if this is interesting to you, and if you don't consider yourself much of an artist, I have two ways to start. Oh, hello, there I am. Um, one is a book called Praying with Color by a woman named Sybil Macbeth like the Scottish play. And um, basically it's your prayer concerns plus doodling plus color. Um, if you Google praying with color, she's got a website and you can learn how to do it, but that might just start your creative juices. It requires no skill, um, but basically you name all the things you're praying for, you doodle around them and connect them. And it's just a way to get out of your head and more into your heart. The other, um, 
if you're interested in starting exploring your own spirituality through art, um, you might consider collage. Um, I, I am not a painter and I'm just always in awe of what Nanette does with, with her oils and acrylics and all of that. Um, but I can cut out pieces of paper and glue them down into patterns and shapes. So, um, you know, I, I would say don't use just regular printer paper, but get a piece of cardboard and get a stack of magazines and cut out the images that speak to you and see, and don't plan it a whole lot, but see how the piece evolves, especially if you ask yourself a question, if there's something you're wrestling with, ask yourself that question and then collage in a response. And um, that's a way to begin. Now, if you are a more talented artist, you might consider um, creating some of the Bible stories. Um, as an art history major, I'm aware that um, a lot of the stories about women in the Bible have not been depicted. And so not that I am ever going to hang in a museum, but just lifting up the stories that speak to you. Or if it's like something out of Paul and it's not a narrative, um, to lift up a word and create around that. So let's see, I have no idea now what time it is. But I think we have time for questions before you guys need to go to. Um, yes, it's 1044. So we have a um, little bit of question time. All right, let's not make me this featured speaker. There we go. Let's look at Nanette. <laughs> what questions do you all have or comments? I just wanted to say I joined, I came to this, um, I don't usually come to Sunday school and here I am. But the reason um, is because I'm on the, there's 150th church anniversary uh, coming up and I'm on the worship and arts committee. And I thought, what am I, I, I tend to be more of a service and mission person. And so I thought, what am I gonna bring to this committee? And I thought this would be very inspirational to me. And it has been, um, there's a, a lot of things that um, it's sort of, my imagination has been expanded here about what we might do. Um, I am an, I have been an artist. I haven't painted in a number of years, but I took watercolor and have painted a lot of watercolor. And I'm really, um, I think the idea of uh, immersing yourself in it and get, I mean, you just put yourself into a whole different state of mind when you're doing that kind of thing. I'll stop talking. <laughs> Thank you, Dale. I'm glad you could be here today. I do want to say Nanette has created some incredible liturgical art and banners and things. So thanks, Beth. I I I have I'm gonna go off screen and pull in a collage picture to tie into what Beth said. So I'll be right back. <laughs> what else do you all want to say? Yeah. This is Beth. I'll go on video. I'm actually as a Catholic worker up in New York City, so the, I have to share the bandwidth with a lot of people. Um, I, I, I just so appreciate this presentation and the idea of beauty and how art can bring us out of our heads and into our hearts. Um, and I'm a particular lover of icons. And I wondered if, I mean, I have, I have a favorite kind of modern icon, iconographer, if, that, if that's the way you say it, um, Bill um, McNichols, um, but I wondered if you could recommend other icons in particular or iconographers. I, I'm thinking particularly, are there women um, other than Nanette who are making um, icons that are actually writing icons, I guess is the way you say it, because um, I'd be super interested in that. Mm. Yeah, that's a great question. I don't know about women teachers, really. I know there are classes offered around. I'm really interested to learn the Prosopone School of Iconography, which is a little bit different. And it's, it's, it's made with egg tempera that's a bit gritty and it's layer upon layer upon layer of transparent and translucent paint. And there's this deep theology of painting and repainting the different layers so that the figure comes out. There's a little bit of that in 
the Byzantine iconography that I do, um, but I also am wanting to learn the prosopone style. But I don't know of women teachers. I know of a woman who paints really charming. I'm putting her name in the chat. She did a she did a gallery show at our church. She does these fabulous icons of lesser known saints. And if you Google her, Beth B, I'm not sure. she's in works out of um, Walla Walla, Washington. Um, and I don't know if she's a teacher, but her icons are amazing. They're just delightful. Like there's the, the saint of beekeeping. Um, and, but yeah, the, I would otherwise defer to Nanette on that one. Um, Thanks for that. That's, that's helpful. A great mm -hmm. recommendation. I'm going to mm -hmm. look for that too. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And I, she has a website and yeah. What else do you all want to talk about? I'll show you this picture. This um, some folks at my former church made this when I was away on sabbatical. It's it's a collage of Jesus, and it has this scripture that says, "You give them something to eat," and the Bible is collaged of text, but then Jesus is made of food. <laughs> All different kinds of food according oh to my gosh. color. That's yeah. great. <laughs> so collaging religious images is another <laughs> kind of cool way you can get a shape and trace that and then do the collaging as a meditation on whatever you're trying to focus in on. Wow. My friend Stacy Imes, who's a Presbyterian minister in um, Seattle had a weekend where she invited her congregation to make pictures of saints, of modern saints. So somebody made an icon of Abraham Lincoln and someone else made an icon of the three women who began, started the Black Lives Matter movement. And, um, and Stacy, like Nanette and me is not a trained artist. If you, um, I'll try and find that link, Mindy, in case that's something y'all might want to be interested in someday. Um, but Thank what you. people came out with was absolutely amazing. Hang on, I got to make myself a note. <laughs> Thank you, Beth. Mm -hmm. Are people familiar with St. Gregory of Nyssa? I put that in there. That's a church in California. They're very into icons and they have, um, and they dance during worship, apparently. I've never been. That's where I was going to go for the prosopone painting workshop, which got canceled due to COVID. Um, but they have some really interesting icons like all around in their church too. I can't remember what denomination. I think they're Episcopalian. I think they're Episcopalian. They also use um, champagne for Easter communion. <laughs> They're in, San, very, they're in San Francisco, of course. <laughs> very celebratory. <clears throat> Mindy, how are we doing on time? Um, it's nine till, so I have to go. But, um, and, and yeah, we should probably wrap it up. But any final questions for this amazing team? Thank you so much. You're welcome. You're very welcome. I just want to say you all are super blessed because I think Mindy is one of the finest pastors in our denomination. So Indeed. Beth, thank you, Beth. Yes. Thank you, Nanette. <laughs> I, Beth and Nanette are in my preaching group. We meet in person usually um, once a year and um, we hold each other up like this uh, all year round. And um, they are blessings to me. And I'm not going to cry. So um, we've needed each other a lot <laughs> during this past year. I will say yes. we've needed each other a lot. Um, so uh, Marcia, do you usually close with a prayer? Um, um, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> would you like me to do that? I would. Thank you. All right. Then um, let, us, let us pray. Loving God, how many ways there are to come to a deeper um, understanding of you and relationship with you. We give you thanks for um, the gift of art and for the way that Nanette and Beth have opened us up to um, new and um, deep ways for us to connect to you. So thank you for their passion for this and for share and for their sharing of this with us. And we ask that you would be with us all in whatever way it is that we connect with you, that we might grow in, in that way and find new ways. 
be with us as we go into worship, be with Beth and Annette in their communities um, in Chicago and Portland and watch over us as we seek to understand what it means to come out of this pandemic and into um, a time of regathering and reconnection. Be with us all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 It's lovely to meet you all. Thank you so much. Thanks so much. Thanks so much. Thank Have a great everybody. day. Take care, everybody. Bye. All right. Bye-bye. <laughs>